The Book of Mormon gold plates should be physically impossible, according to critics. A solid block of gold like that would just be way too heavy to carry, like Joseph Smith describes. But one guy just found one million ways the gold plates could be physically possible at the right weight, thanks to this stack of copper discs. Six by six by eight inches of solid gold should easily weigh over 200 pounds, even though witnesses said they weighed closer to like 50 or 60. And so researcher Josh Code set out to figure out the actual dimensions and size of the gold plates using statements from their witnesses, a computer algorithm, and his own experiments. First, he confirmed what other scholars have previously suggested. The plates were not likely pure gold like here, but rather an alloy of gold with copper and silver that would have made it significantly lighter. Second, he accounted for every single little tiny variation in how the witnesses described the size of the plates. Some said it was like five inches tall, some six, and those little tweaks can make a big difference in the final outcome. Third, the plates were not a solid block of metal, but dozens of thin metal sheets, which would naturally create small amounts of airspace between the plates. So Coates fabricated copper discs and stacked them up and found out exactly how much airspace would have been between metal sheets of the right size and compression, showing that there would have been about 53% void space. So he took all of the variations of metal alloys, all of the variations in length, width, and height, and he accounted for the amount of airspace between the plates. And when he ran the numbers, it output almost 1 million viable combinations in which the gold plates are mathematically possible. And it gets better. He even worked out how the full Book of Mormon could fit on fewer than 200 plates using an Egyptian script. If you wanna hear how, come watch Josh present his findings at the fair conference on August 7th. And you can also read the full paper at the Interpreter Foundation.